right, what's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Today we're here with Ty Nichols. Now, those of you that possibly want to go to the continent, Ty is, is the man for you uh, because he can hook you up where you're not stuck out on the streets and you'll be in a good situation if you go to Rwanda. So, Ty, thanks for joining the show today. Thanks a lot, Phil. All right, Ty, tell people a little bit about, you know, what you're doing in, in Rwanda and, and what's your qualifications, you know, to make sure for people say, well, who is this guy, uh, the, your qualifications and what you're doing? Okay, I'll give you first off, I'll talk a little bit about myself. I am a licensed uh, real estate agent here in the state of Florida. I'm also a home inspector and a real estate appraiser. So that's to give you a little bit about my experience as far as buying and selling real estate. But what I do in Rwanda is basically the same thing, but I just opened up an office and I was thinking, People always asking, well, how can I get to Rwanda? You know, what can I do in Africa? What type of business can I start? So I put together a program where they can come to Africa. I give them a place to stay. I give them training and also have a, like a meal plan. So they get three meals a day. And I put all that together into one package for $3,000. Okay. And so they just have to worry about getting their own visa, right? Well, we, we do that too. Well, first off, as soon as you land at the airport, they're going to give you a visa anyway. But then we're going to try to get them another visa where they can work in Rwanda. Okay. And this in the city of Kigali, correct? That's correct. Okay. So the homes that, that you have, or that somebody can pay, do you pay $3,000 up front or, or it's like pay half up front? How, how do you do that? No, they pay the whole $3,000 up front and that covers 30 days. So, like I said, they have a place to stay. They have food to eat. You know, we'll, we, they have a meal plan where we give them three meals a day. And also we'll give them training to become a real estate agent. So then they can also work for us. You know, so everything okay, is so all basically earn income. Yes. So therefore they have everything all wrapped up into one package. So like I said, because a lot of people say, well, I, I want to go to Africa, but I don't know how to get started. I don't know what to do. And this program covers everything. You know, you pay one price and it covers everything. Okay, so you went on the ground in Rwanda. What was the overall response, you know, to the people that, you know, you was working with and just with the overall community? Because, you know, a lot of people here, you know, they, they have a, a, a great fear of the unknown. That's for sure. I, yes, definitely. So, you know, how, how did the people treat you over there? The people were very nice. I mean, just like the whole continent for the most, well, I'm not going to say the whole continent, but all the countries I've been to, I've been to about seven countries. And overall, they're very nice. They're very friendly. They're family oriented. And I mean, the people treat you nice, way better than what you expect, you know, to be treated and way better than what they treat you here in the States. You know, the people will welcome you when you come there and the people actually look out for you, you know, so no, the people are very nice. And how many times did you go to Rwanda before you actually, you know, got that set up? Actually, just twice. Okay, so the first time you were just kind of on the ground trying to, you know, learn and, and yeah, just and make find my way, yeah, find my way around, you know, see what the people were like, see what the experience is, and it's it's very nice. Like I said, it's very nice. It's very clean. Uh, it's easy to get around. Like I said, the people treat you friendly. So I enjoyed it. And so I said, well, maybe I should move my office here, you know, because I had an office over in Ghana, but I've moved everything from Ghana to here and I'll be going back in about two weeks. OK, so so what's the differences that you notice between Ghana and, and, and Rwanda? Because you, you, you it, it impressed you so much um, that you say, you know what, I need to move my office over here. What Tell us what impressed you about Rwanda. Well, the, the main thing is ease of business. It's very business friendly in Rwanda. You can get your business license the same day. You know, you can walk in there like nine o'clock and you're going to walk out with your license at like maybe 11 o'clock. So the ease of business is very fast. Uh, you don't have to sit around and wait and cut through all kinds of red tape. I mean, everything is just smooth and, and they welcome new businesses because they trying to, you know, be like the best country in Africa. Yeah, you know, ease of business, you know, you know, definitely for me is um, just super important. I'm not going to even go to your country if it has no ease of business. Uh, That's right. You know, yeah. Kenya has, you know, ease of business. I mean, I, I definitely heard Uganda as well, and you mentioned in uh, Rwanda. Um, how is the internet speed? 
you know, over there? They have fiber internet and things like that? Yes. I mean, from what I've seen, it's just the same as here. I mean, I didn't have any problems. As a matter of fact, you know, when I went there, I spent a few days in Tanzania. Mm-hmm. And I think it was better over in Rwanda than what it was in Tanzania. Because when I was in Tanzania, I had not a lot, but I had a, a few few issues here and there, but nothing major. But Rwanda was like, just like here. Like I said, I didn't see any difference. Okay. And also, you know, I was hearing that there's a program that um, they about to vote on in Rwanda. Like basically people like yourself, or you're bringing businesses to Rwanda, they, they trying to make a fast track to citizenship. Did you hear about that? No, to be honest, I haven't heard about that because I was too busy, you know, trying to get myself set up and, you know, get mm-hmm. my, my stuff going right. So no, I didn't yeah, hear about yeah, that. I heard about, I heard about that. And, um, you know, so I was like, oh, wow, that, that's good. Because, see, uh, what one big mistakes some black Americans are making for what I'm kind of seeing online is that they think they can kind of do bit, do things like you do here. You know, like in America, you can just research everything online, call people, do this, do that. Yes. And you can set up everything online before you get you know anywhere. But versus in the continent, just the way it's set up, it's like things are kind of like going backwards to the 90s and maybe the 80s where you you know you still have to go you know at one point in time we used to go and pay all our bills actually. yes oh today yeah. we paying bills today so you're going to all these different places yeah. um, <laughs> and it's people don't understand it's still like that over there when they're so used to this everything's online everything's an email everything's a you know whatever could you explain to people maybe a little bit even with the real estate business about you know why you shouldn't just look at no homes online and just try to go get into it yeah, well, some of the stuff is already, you know, can be done online. Like a lot of the banking, I was really impressed with a lot of the banking they actually do with their telephone, you know, so as far as paying bills and stuff, they actually are, you know, in the 21st century because they pay everything by by phone. But uh, as far as paying bills, then some of those, not many, but some of them, they may pay by going from place to place. But as far as real estate, Real estate is is very easy and simple too. You know, you just go there to their office and you do the transaction. You know, you sign just like here. You sign your paperwork, you do your closing, and it's a done deal. So, like I said, the business business wise, uh, Rwanda is very simple, and that's why I chose that country to set up shop. Well, let, let me let me rephrase what I'm saying. What I'm saying is, yeah, I know about mobile money and all of that. That's one thing they actually do a lot, you know, better in some instances than even we do mm-hmm. with mobile money, like the M-Pesa and yes. all of that, you know. Uh, but what I mean by that is, like, you have to still get on the ground to do something when you're in the continent. Like, you got to actually show your face, basically. It's not like yes. we can do something through a Zoom call or we can do something, you know, like in America, we ain't got to even see each other and do business. Yes. Yeah, because they want to to get to know you. They're like I say, they're more family oriented, they're more people oriented. So of course they they, they prefer to you know, be in contact with you. But at the same time, like I said, they they're in the twenty first century too. So you can do it both ways actually. Right. So, you know, and then uh, Kigali is actually Kigali is one of the cleanest cities in Africa, correct? That's correct. It's very clean. Yeah, so w- did you witness it? I heard that the, the people all get involved with the cleanup. Were you there when they did that? No, but they. I think that's like the last Saturday of every month. So, no, I wasn't there on that last Saturday. But, yeah, from uh, what I remember, it's the last Saturday of every month that everybody, including the president, they all get together and they just clean clean everything, the streets, the alleys, every, every, everything. So yeah. the, the the city is very clean. It's very clean. Yeah, and then you and then you see some other cities in the continent, and you're like, "Why in the hell y'all got all this trash all over the place?" It's like yeah. you know, because I've seen I've seen some of it, brother, and I'm like, <laughs> "Oh man, like, why do you just put this on the ground? Like, you can't find the trash can somewhere, you know? Say something that simple, you know?" Yeah, I've seen it. I've seen it. Yeah, they they open something up and just throw it straight on the ground. Instead of you know having a trash can somewhere to toss it in, but yeah, yeah that's you the know, way it is. An unfortunate thing, you know, I've seen that right here in America too. Yes, exactly. You know, well, I've, I've been been places where you know, they say you know clean up, let's clean up the hood day, and everybody with black trash bags picking up everything, all the trash or whatever, getting it nice and clean. Go back next week, and it's about looking back the same thing. The so same. I don't know yeah. what it is with some of us, just globally, that we just had this mentality that we think trash belongs on the floor. 
Uh, yes. that, that definitely really bothers me. But the per the person that say, OK, I want to go to 30 days. You said the meals. Is this like uh, vouchers for uh, going to the grocery store or is somebody's cooking the food? Like, no, how, Well, you know how in Africa they have house help. So we actually yeah. have people that's on property that's going to cook your food for you. Okay. So I want them to have when they come, I want them to have the real Africa experience to see what it's like to actually live there. Because that's the real reason why most of them are coming anyway, because they want to move there. So I want them to know what it feels like to actually live in Africa. So we're going to have people there cooking their meals for them. We're going to have, you know, someone cleaning the house for them. So like I said, they're going to have the full experience. We know we're going to take them around. We're going to give them a city tour. We're going to help them with their visa. I mean, like I said, everything that they need to get started in another country, we're going to help them with. So by the end of the 30 days, they got to know what it feels like to actually be an, uh, a citizen of Rwanda. And also, if that 30 days is not enough, they can extend it on a monthly basis for $750 to $800, depending on, you know, where they stand. Okay, so what's the what's the biggest place that you, you have, like, if a person, like, let's say, like, someone like me, family, you know, big family, you know, me, wife, uh, you know, maybe, like, let's say a family of five going, five or okay. six. You got for someone like, me. For, well, for someone like you, we work out a different program because mm -hmm. this program that I'm talking about now is for like individuals. Okay. But for people that have a family, you know, we would have to sit down and talk and I need to know exactly what it is you're looking for, how big of a house you want, because it's going to be a little bit more expensive. Right. But I always tell people it's going to be more expensive. But when you're really dealing in real estate, you know, what, like I say, because we're going to train you to be a real estate agent. I mean, you can make that money without a problem. Of course, I can't guarantee it because, you know, you work by commission and I don't know, you know, how some people work. You know, if you, right. if you got a good work, I think then you should be able to make that money and not have a problem. But some people, they're going to come, you know, they're going to want to go to the clubs. They're going to want to hang out. They're going to want to do this. They're going to want to do that. They're not going to take it serious. So I, that's why I say I can't guarantee how much money you're going to make. But if you're somebody that's serious and you follow instructions, then you shouldn't have any problems. Yeah, and, and some of the property. So if somebody say, "Hey, I want to stay in this particular neighborhood," you say, "Well, I find some over there." That's kind of how it is done. Because they, they say, "Let's say I researched or whatever," and I say, "Oh, uh, uh, Ty, this neighborhood right here. Can you can you find me something over here for about thirty to sixty days? Is that something basically you can do?" No, we have our own properties, but okay. if they if they want to go somewhere else, they they're able to do that. You know, like if, like you said, if they see another property and they say. Well, I don't want to stay in this side of town. I want to stay on this side of town. They can do that, but that's going to be at their own expense because we already have everything already set up. Okay. So if they want something more expensive, it's just like, say, for instance, like I said, we have the three meals a day, but mm -hmm. if you want to eat at a fancy restaurant, then that's at your own expense. We're right. not going to give you three meals a day and then say, okay, now we're going to take you to a five-star restaurant. You know, that's going to be at your own expense. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, I, was, yeah. Just, I was just asking, like, because... You know, some people got families, you know, like I said, not yes. just me, but but others. So I was wondering if you had family, you know, a place that's big enough to accommodate a big family. Yeah, we, we yeah, we had the properties. Yeah, that's not a that's not an issue. We have properties all over the whole city and in all price ranges. But I was just saying that if you want something out of what we already provide, then it's gonna be like a, a extra charge. Okay. All right. Yeah. But so, no, we have everything. We have condos, we have apartments. I mean, any type of, of home you want, we have. You know, we have offices, whatever type of real estate you need, we have. But like I said, if you want something special, it's going to be an extra charge because you're going outside of what we've already provided. Right. Right. OK. Yes. So so they have the, the house help because most, you know, black Americans aren't used to that, you know. No. And then what they don't understand is that um, the, a lot of times the house help is being paid two to three hundred dollars a month U.S., well, and in Rwanda, it's not even that much. It's not even that much. No, it's not even not even close yeah. to that. Yeah, I'm quoting Kenya prices. So it's, yeah. it's, even, it's, yeah, even it's, it's actually lower than that. Lower than that. OK, yes. so so just imagine you're paying less than two hundred dollars a month and you have someone. Now, is this the person that's working eight to five or live in? No, this is going to be uh, what well, it depends if you get like a house or apartment. If you have an apartment, then it's going to be somebody that's going to yeah come in and work a few hours and leave. But if you have if you stand in one of our houses, then it's going to be somebody's going to be standing actually on property. 
Okay. So let's say you get someone on property for less than that a month. I mean, we, we don't even realize sometimes how, you know, much we are stressed. And think about if you had somebody to cook or you just had somebody to help with the kids or you can go mm -hmm. date night or whatever and, and, and you're good, you know, with the house help with the kids. I mean, that, that will make your life so much better. And, and people don't even realize that. No, they, they don't realize really. We think that we we got it made, but actually the people who's who's well off are actually, I think, in my opinion, anyway, that they're actually doing better over there than we, we are over here. Because even somebody's like on a, a teacher salary can afford house help. You know, you don't have to. A lot of people think here in the States, they think you have to be rich to have a maid. But over there, you can just be a school teacher and have a, a living maid at your house who will do all your cleaning, all your cooking. And you, you just, you know, have a regular job. So it's not just for the rich, it's for anyone who's making, you know, a little bit above average salary for that country. Yeah. And I, and I think I think the program you have is good because, you know, we don't I don't want no black American just to jump up and go to stay in the continent and just just leave America and, and, and don't know what you're doing. Right. Because exactly. there there's you know, I've seen, you know, one I think one particular YouTube channel that's basically, in my opinion, did that. And then mm -hmm. now they're, they're talking online about all their bad experiences. I think what you should guys should do is go take up Ty's uh, 30, 30 day program just to see. And they say, hey, you can deal with it. You know what I'm saying? Get exactly. the coach out, get on the ground, get to see how people are. I think programs like this that you have is, is, is great. Um, so, so Ty, uh, um, this is what I want to know. So, mm -hmm. If a person saying, all right, I want to sign up for that. I, I want to uh, uh, get involved with that. I want to go to Rwanda. I want to see how it is for myself. Um, how could they do that? All they got to do is just go to my website, africainvestmentguide.com, and go down, scroll down a little ways where it says relocate to Rwanda, and they can go there and read about the program. They can also contact me if they have any questions. And, you know, because I'm more than glad to answer any questions, rather by phone or email, you know, because I, I answer my emails and I answer my calls. So if they have any questions, they can easily contact me by going to AfricaInvestmentGuide.com. We can talk about it and they can sign up. And another good thing, too, like I said, you can extend this program. If you think that uh, 90 days, I'm sorry, if you think that 30 days is not long enough, and you want to stay for 90 days, then you can pay, you know, the extra two months. Or if you want, if you think 30 days is too long, you just want to stay for two weeks, you can do that as well. So the program is very flexible. Like I said, it comes with everything you need, place to stay, food, employment, everything that you need. Like I said, to get started in a new country, we help you to, to get. And if you have any questions, we answer those as best as we can. And if you're not into real estate, we can also, you know, help you to start another type of business that you might have. All right. So, you know, now the brother Ty gave y'all the game on that and, and I'm glad he did. You know, so you could say, hey, look, try it out for 30 days. If you got 30 days to burn, he said even just 14 days. But, hey, I think it'd be good if you try out 30 days uh, on the yes. content. It, it really may change your mind. And, and like I said, Rwanda definitely has an ease of business. I mean, I've definitely been looking into it. And I would tell most black Americans go somewhere where it's developed for one. And ease of business is, is is very important because, you know, not all of us can go from where we at to a place that's not going to have a good ease of business yet or not don't have much development. Infrastructure. Uh, I mean, it has yeah, everything infrastructure is part of that infrastructure. And it's know, very, I, very secure and safe. Yeah. So it's also yeah. one of the safest countries in Africa. You can walk day or night and don't have to worry about, you know, people bothering you because, you know, it's. They got security everywhere, so it's very safe. All right, and you hearing it from somebody who who been there, who doing business over there, and you say you're going back in two weeks, correct? Yes, that's right. gonna be that's gonna be a permanent move when I go back. Oh, okay, okay. You just yeah. going you leave you leaving Babylon? Oh, definitely. <laughs> so that's why I'm inviting people to come because I'm gonna be there permanently. So that shows you how much I like it and how much I can, you know make a decent living over there. I wouldn't be, you know, pulling up stakes like that if I wasn't really serious. So therefore, if you want to, if you're serious about coming to Rwanda, like I say, join me, join my program, stay for 30 days. Or if, like I said, if you don't have 30 days, stay for two weeks, but at least you'll have a, a, a real feel because like I say, you're going to be staying with the actual people of Africa. You're not going to be staying at, like, at a hotel. You're going to be staying with the locals. So you're going to really know what it feels like to live in a city in Africa because you're going to be around them 
24 seven. And like I said, it's very safe. The people are very friendly. Your meals is taken care of. I'm gonna teach you how to sell real estate. Everything, like I said, for that one low price of three thousand dollars. And now, don't and wait. Let me let me say one more thing real quick ahead. because when I was on another show, uh, like around this time last year, I, I had a program, and everybody sat around and waited and waited and waited. But then when I doubled the price, now everybody's crying. Well, why did I double the price? I said, well, when I did the show, that's when everyone should have signed up. So people, I know people that's watching this is gonna sit around and wait. They're going to say, well, I'm going I'm to wait a little bit. But by then, it's possible. I'm not saying it will, but it's very possible that that price is going to go up. So if you're serious about getting out of Babylon and going to Africa, now's the best time. Like I said, if it's nothing more than just to, to visit, you should check it out because you're getting a lot for that price. And I'm not sure if that price is going to stay at 3000 As a matter of fact, I can almost guarantee it's not. So, uh, And, and one choice. last and one last thing, um, what are the requirements for, for U.S. citizens to come into the country outside of a visa? Do you have to take a COVID test? Yes. They make everybody take a COVID test. And they, they just stick like a little thing in your mouth, you know, and, and, and test it. And you get your results back in less than 24 hours. Okay. So. Um, and by the way, you get your visa when you get there. Because a lot of people say, well, I need to go get my visa. Well, you don't need to get your visa because when you land at the airport, you're not going to leave that airport until you get your visa because trust me, they, they're going to get make sure you get that visa because that's like income for them. I think it's like, uh, don't quote me, but I think it's like $60 for the visa, 50 or 60. I can't remember. But anyway, they're going to make sure they get their money before you leave that airport. So don't worry about a visa. Just worry about, you know, your plane ticket and getting there because they're going to make sure that you get a visa. Yeah, and and, and um, outside of COVID tests, you know, so, so the U.S. isn't banned. They just got to take. So do you got to take one before you get there, and you got to take one when you get there? Is that how yes. it's going to work? Yes, exactly. Now, yes. is that COVID test that you're taking over there? Is that your expense? No, not. I'm not talking yes. about you. I'm talking about the person's expense. Yes, because I don't know, you know, if they have COVID or not. Because if if you come back uh, positive, then you have to stay in quarantine. You know, for a couple of days, they're just going to retest you yeah. again and tell, you know, so we can't be paying that because what if you're there for a week or a month? I'm not saying that's going to happen. I, I don't know nobody that this happened to. But I'm just, you know, saying worst case scenario. If you go there and they say, well, you got COVID, we got to stay in quarantine. Well, we can't keep paying your hotel stay every night until you come up negative. So that's something you have to pay for yourself. And, uh, and the COVID test is uh, $60. Okay, it's sixty dollars. Okay, yeah, that's, yeah, that's that's at your own expense. Yeah, because that's, that's the thing that we gotta know too nowadays with this COVID yes, going on. Exactly. So once we pick you up from your hotel, then you become our responsibility. And you know, like I say, from that point forward, you know, nothing comes out your pocket unless you want, like I say, something special. Like I said, if you want to go out to the club or if you want to go to a fancy restaurant, then you have to pay all of that out of your own pocket. Okay, and how many hours prior to your flight uh, for your COVID test to fly to Rwanda? Uh, to Rwanda? Say that again. How many hours prior to your flight uh, uh -huh. you have to take your um, your COVID test your when you decide? It is. I think they give you four, four or five days. I think it's yeah, a hundred. Probably the ninety-six hour average. They, they I think it's a hundred. I think it's hundred and twenty hours, something like that. For your flight, okay. All right. Yeah, double check to make sure, but I think it's 120 hours before you get there. You have to take the test. Well, which one did you take? Did you take the rapid test? Yes, I went. I went to um, like one. Of, they have like a medical center here in Tampa. Uh -huh. Where I went and then took mine. Okay, you got it like what in 45 minutes, something like that. No, it wasn't that fast. It was like the next day. But they call it uh, the, what it is the PCR COVID. Yeah, test. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so PCR. make sure it's PCR. Yes, because okay. if it's not PCR, they're not gonna accept it. Okay. All right. Yeah, we want to make sure let it, just make sure we know all that with the traveling. Yeah. Uh, yeah. When they contact me, I'll give them all the information that they know because okay. they also have like a certain list too for hotels. You just can't stay at any hotel, so that's the mistake I made. You know, I booked my hotel and they say, "Oh, this hotel not on the list." I say, "Well, I didn't even know it was a list." So, uh, all the pertinent information when they contact me, I'll give them all the information because I don't want you to book a hotel and then you be like me and. They say, oh, well, you can't stay at that hotel because that's not on our list. You know, they have a, a special list that you that your hotel has to be on. OK, 
So now you know all the information, ladies and gentlemen. Make sure you go to AfricanInvestmentGuide.com and and check that African out. Investment guide. Contact Ty. Get all the if per, pertinent information from him. Uh, maybe something I didn't ask. You can ask him. Because some of you may want to go to Wanda Hill. Some of y'all may want to go um, next month or so and say, you know what? I want to get out of this country just until after the election. And maybe I'll come back. We'll see. I may not come back at all. We'll see what you think. So, Ty, we definitely thank you for joining us on the show today, brother, and um, letting people know about this opportunity. All right. Thank you very much for having me.